Welcome back once again. This is another EOC review video. This is still review number three. Of course, the PDF is linked in the video description. This is part four, our final part of this review. We're going to be dealing with systems of equations and inequalities using graphs to help solve and find intersections. Many of these equations can be solved by hand, but this focus is specifically going to be on how to use Desmos to get your answer. So the work that I'm going to put down is going to be mostly sketching graphs and visualizing what the equation solutions look like on the graph, not by hand. Let's get started. We have two functions here. f of x is 2x cubed minus 2x minus 3, and g of x is negative absolute value of x minus 4. The first thing I want to do is graph those and sketch what those graphs look like so I'm going to key them both in. I'm not going to worry about typing f of x and g of x since there's just one variable. That's what your graph should look like. Your absolute value can be found using the absolute value function down here, or you can do shift and hold the button above enter, and you can also get that vertical line that way as well. So now how do I answer the question? Let me sketch the graphs first. I really don't care uh, how accurate they are. I just want to make sure I can get the general shape of the graphs and how many points of intersection there are. When I zoom in on it, I see three points of intersection. I'm going to click on those. And be careful not to click all the points you see. We're only concerned about where do these graphs actually meet each other. And so I have three distinct points, which I'm going to write down here. Once you've identified those points, then you can um, get rid of the graph. We don't really need it from any more beyond this because we're just really asking about the solutions to the equation. And so let's read the question, see what it's asking. It says, how many real solutions exist that make f of x equal gx to be true? And what they're really saying is, um, if I were to do 2x cubed minus 2x minus 3 equals negative absolute value of x minus 4, how many values of x make that equation true. And while I have one, two, three values there, so the answer is going to be three real solutions. And I have them listed out here. So the question says, what's the largest value of x? So all my x values, I have negative 1.366, 0 0.366, and 1. That's my largest x. So that's going to be just 1 the largest x. The smallest y, the smallest y is going to be this number right here. This number, negative 5.366 is the smallest y. Negative 3.634 is the next smallest. Negative 3 is the largest y. So that's going to be the smallest y. So this question is not intended for you to do by hand. Um, this is, do you know how to plug things into your graph and interpret the question the way it's asked? All right, let's go to the next set of questions. Number four, let f of x equals 14x cubed plus 28x squared minus 46x and g of x equals 2x plus 7. What is the solution set to the equation 1 12th f of x equals g of x. Now that is multiplied, so really I'm doing 1 12 times that, and I want to set it equal to this. Once again, I want to use a graph to get the answers. These are all x values. So when you see a squiggly bracket, this is an x, 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 x. These are just like all the x values from order of smallest to largest. So let's go ahead and graph that. Putting both of those functions in, um, is going to yield a graph that looks like this. I just want to warn you, you cannot put an equation in your NC test version of Desmos like this. I know some of you may have tried to do this before in class, but I just want to warn you on the EOC, the version of Desmos doesn't allow you to just do explicit and implicit equations just with an equal sign. You may have gotten away with it before. On the non-tested Desmos version, which a lot of you probably have used, you could probably go through and say, all right, I look if I just put the equation in as I see it without really uh, thinking too much about you know what the graphs look like, I see, well, cross is at negative 3, negative 1, and 2, and those are my answers. And those are the answers. You just can't, you can't get away with doing it on the tested version. So you have to do the workaround with the two intersections of the graphs. So I want to draw, I want to find those intersections, and then I want to draw that, sketch that graph out real quick. So remember, the intersections are where the graphs meet each other.
And so if I sketch that graph out, what I'm looking for are just the X values. So don't worry about the, the Y's. Um, your X values are going to be your answers. And negative 3, negative 1, and positive 2 are going to give you answer choice B. That's all there is to it. Just be careful with how you type things in. And once again, you cannot put the exact equation in. You have to put two separate graphs in to get that intersection. On to the next question. This is an exponential equation. You have probably learned how to solve this using logarithms. Let me show you how to use a graph, and I can review the logarithmic part too. When typing it into the graph, anytime you have an exponential, an exponent that has multiple terms in it, you're going to want to use parentheses around it. And then anytime you have one side that's just the number, you're going to want to type y equals that number. Let's key that in. All right, 3 times 6 raised to the, and then you can do parentheses x minus 5. Go to the next line, because it's the other side of the equation, and write y equals 900. 900 is very far up, so you're going to need to zoom out or just go, 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 go. You can do the minus sign if you want until you see where they cross. Maybe go back in a little bit, and your answer will be 8.183 to three decimal places. And Desmos usually only goes to three decimal places when you do a graph intersection anyway. So the answer is 8.183. For the curious, here's how you do it by hand. Step one, divide both sides by three. Step two, take the log base six of both sides. Step three, cancel out the bases. You're left with x minus five on the left side equals log base 6 of 300. At that point, you may want to evaluate log base 6 of 300 using your calculator. You can do that in Desmos by doing log underscore, so shift minus, 6 parentheses 300, and you get about 3.183. Last step, add 5 to both sides to get x by itself x equals 8.183. And we'll review that skill in a later video, so don't worry if you didn't follow it along right now. Thanks for watching. Let's do number six. We're going to have a separate video going over how to solve absolute values, equations, and inequalities, so I'm not going to get into how to do this one by hand at all. I'm just going to show you how to use the graphs to kind of assist you with this equation. So the question says, um, the inequality absolute value 3x minus 3 minus 4 is less than 6. We're going to find that inequality and sketch it out first. So the first thing I want to do is I want to treat this as an equal. I want to graph this on the left side. And then I want to just say y equals 6 and graph that as well. So let's go ahead and do that graph right now. Here's how it's keyed in. When I zoom back in to see kind of where those points of intersection are, I get about negative 2.333 and 4.333. Now let's focus on what the inequality means. The question says, what is the smallest integer value that make the inequality true? Integer values are numbers that are counting numbers, like negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Numbers on a number line. And the smallest value that actually works where this graph is less than, this is under, less than 6, is going to be any of these numbers here. Because if I go to negative 3, well, that's too far out. And if I go to positive 4, uh, excuse me, positive 5, that's too far out. So I don't want to include those numbers. But anything between negative 2 and 4, including negative 2 and 4, are part of the solution set. So, um, these are all your integer solutions to this inequality. And the question says, what's the smallest integer? The smallest integer is going to be negative 2. So the answer to 6 is negative 2. The largest integer is going to be 4. So for number 7, that's going to be 4. Hopefully that makes sense. You can also get an inequality shaded region on your graph by doing the following. So I'm not sure why the graphing Desmos allows this, but not equations. But if you put the entire inequality in, it'll give you a shaded region that works for your solution set. If you zoom in, um, you'll notice that all the integers, let me clear these out so you can see better. All the integers that are between 
um, these are your integers, negative two, negative one. Let's see, negative one is here, excuse me. Um, zero, those are all integers. Those are all part of the shaded region. But if I go out to negative three, that's over here. That is no good. That's outside the shaded region. So the dashed line means less than. If it were less than or equal to, it'd be a solid line. But again, we had our answers here, um, negative, negative two on the left side, since that is going to be your smallest integer. And positive, what was it, positive four on the right side. That's your largest integer. On to the next question. All right, this is going to be our last question in this review. Um, on this video, part four, number eight, we want to know which system of inequalities represents the solution set the solution set graphed below. If you have an inequality that has an f of x, Desmos will not allow f of x, so you have to change these all to y's. So go ahead and write down y for all those now. You just get that f of x out of there. But you got to have something on the left side, otherwise you won't get a shaded region. From there, you're just going to type exactly what you see. Your goal is to find the overlapped region. I would be mindful of your dotted lines and solid lines so you kind of know what those look like on your graph. But you want to find the overlapped region and see what matches up on your graph. So take a moment to graph your inequality systems and find the one that actually works. Again, remember, you cannot use f of x when you're typing these, so you got to use y. Okay. Here's graph choice A. My overlapped region is here which is similar to this, but notice where the shading is. This is a solid line versus this is being a dotted line, and this is dotted and solid. So it looks like my inequalities are switched. So A is not going to work. Let's look at choice B. With choice B, both of them are going to be, oops, this is a greater than. Um, I have my dashed and solid lines correct, but the problem is, is my overlap region is in this area here which I want it to be over here, not up here. So that's not going to work. For choice C, it's pretty obvious they don't even meet each other. So that's not going to give us a correct graph. So it's going to have to be D. Here's answer choice D, graphed. Let's pull that over here and see if we can match up that graph. Notice the dashing right here. And the solid line up here seems to be consistent. Again, my overlapped region is all in here which is what this shaded region represents. So answer choice D is correct. That concludes this video and this EOC review number three. Thanks for watching. There'll be more EOC reviews coming up, two more.